There was a time when any kind of performing art for women was considered taboo and female characters were played by men in cinema, in theatre and even in Nautanki. Women did not have the freedom to venture out of the four walls of the house. Today, both men and women perform Nautanki together on the stage. There was one woman, however, who initiated this change in women occupying space on the stage. In this video, we talk about the life and work of the first female Nautanki artist, the Queen of Nautanki, Gulab Bai. As per the book The Queen of Nautanki Theatre, written by author Deepthi Priya Mehrotra, Gulab Bai was born in 1920 in the Balapurva village in the Farukabad district of Uttar Pradesh in a Beria family. The women of the tribe were known to be proficient in the art of dancing and singing. At the age of 12, Gulab saw the skit Raja Harish Chandra performed by the then well known theatrical company Teer Mohan's Company. It was after watching the performance that Gulab felt the desire to join theatre. The next morning, her father took her to Teer Mohan Lal and requested him to include her in their Nautanki company. However, Gulab's interest and her father's request did face pushback by virtue of her being a woman wanting to join the company and perform. But when Gulab Bai recited some ghazals from the performance of the group the night before, Teer Mohan Lal immediately included Gulab Bai in the drama company and asked her to accompany them to Kanpur. Her performance with Teer Mohan Lal's company began to be received very well by the audiences. Thousands would gather to watch Nautanki at the crossroads for Teer Mohan Lal's company. Gulab Bai's performance is what made the difference and brought the crowds. <laughs> While the crowds initially gathered, fascinated by the fact that a woman would be performing on stage, after the play was over, they would be in awe of the talent and performances of Gulab Bai. While initially Gulab Bai was hired at a basic pay, as her fame increased, so did her pay. From 50 rupees, with time, it became more than a thousand rupees. Often, fights would tend to break out amongst the spectators who had come to witness Gulab Bai's performances. When the fight started increasing, the city Kotwal asked Teer Mohan Lal to leave Kanpur city and go to Kannauj. She also did several plays for the freedom movement under the name of Bahadur Ladki. She worked and performed for Teer Mohan Lal's company for almost 20 years. It so happened that once, on hearing the news of her sister injuring herself by falling from the terrace, Gulab Bai asked Teer Mohan Lal for some money, but Teer Mohan Lal refused. It is believed that this was the reason Gulab left the company and the job and returned to Kanpur to be with her sisters. On her return to Kanpur, she met few of her acquaintances and started a new company. She started going to weddings and performing and gradually established the great Gulab Theatre Company. All of Gulab Bai's hard work paid off as the company made a huge name in Kanpur city. A woman who started performing at a mere base pay was now employing others in her own company. She single-handedly raised her siblings and her children. Her Nautanki company ran for close to 20 years. But post-independence from 1970 onwards, the influence of cinema started increasing and due to the increase in entertainment tax, the popularity of Nautanki started fading. This led to the shutting down of Gulab Bai's Nautanki company. In 1988, Gulab Bai received the Sangeet Natak Academy Award and Nautanki was recognized as a cultural heritage. Gulab Bai was also accorded as the most prominent artist of the genre. She was also awarded the Padma Shri in 1990. Gulab Bai passed away on 13th May 1996. While Gulab Bai's life and her pioneering work rarely find mention in our history books, she remains one of the prominent figures in the movement for equal rights for women in the field of entertainment. Gulab Bai was a woman from the backward tribes who had systematically been denied agency for ages. But through her will and her art, she dominated a field that was solely reserved for men and achieved its highest honour.